land and Labrador and in bridging communities through arts and heritage. This is Rogers TV. When you give a part of yourself through Canadian Blood Services, your donation could go on to captivate a country, fuel the future, be the best dad, or support cultures to thrive. Because when you donate through Canadian Blood Services, you don't just make a difference, you make all the difference. Join Canada's lifeline today at blood.ca. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. In its, I mean, 22 years is young for people, super old for TV shows. I wish I was 22. Actually, no, I'm like I'm 40. Tonight, uh, I got kind of an eclectic show. We're going to talk to Mr. Mike Fisher, who's been a musician and in the entertainment industry and was here at Rogers for a long time. Over 40 years he's been at this stuff. He's got a new album. He's got some shows. We're also going to talk to Mr. John Harris, who is with the Memorial University Student Union. They've got some complex stuff going on. So we got a couple of great conversations. But first, here's a music video from Mr. Mike Fisher. Um, diary of a psychic vampire. Enjoy. I am the endless mirror. <laughs> Happiness is in short supply I will take it from you that I won't deny A few minutes of me you'll start to fade I don't worry, you'll feel better in a few days But now you're feeling me Can you tell me what you see? It's not the blood I need, just you. Feel your happiness slip away from you. Oh no, you're so sad and blue. Emotions I take from you, you won't believe. But bye for now, you feel relieved. Can you tell me what you see? It's not the blood I need, just you. What you want, I identify what you need. I can supply what you feel. Ooh, I sympathize. Sympathetic here, but realize all oh, much to fear. A few minutes of me, you will start to fade. I don't worry, you'll feel better in a few days. And now you're feeling me Can you tell me what you see? It's not the blood I need Just you What you want What you need What you feel It comes inside of me What you want What 
So, uh, fresh off watching that, Mike. First of all, hello. Hey. <laughs> it's nice Jason, to see you. Jason, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for bringing the video with us because I think it's, it's a good way for the audience to get some context of um, who you are, what your music history has been like. You've been in the entertainment industry like, what, 40 years? Over 40 now, I yeah. think. Yeah. And to come off of the video to get a feel for... Um, your artistry and the way that you've done things, uh, I think that's the perfect kind of context. So talk to me about the story that is the diary of a psychic vampire. Like, because I'm watching it and I'm, ge I'm gleaning little bits of stuff from it, but I'm curious for you to say, this is what this song is about mm -hmm. and this is how that story's told. Okay, the video is a little um, more descriptive than what I meant to write. Uh, basically, to visualize it, I thought of a psychic with a crystal ball, and uh, people come in for a reading, and uh, the, the energy is slowly drained from them. Now, in the lyrics, actually, before I had the concept for the video, um, thanks to Perry Cooper for shooting it, by the way, uh, was more you know, people you meet, relatives, friends, and they just pain in the ass, drain your energy. Can never keep them happy, yeah. you know, like they come over for dinner, it's like, oh God, when are they going to leave, you know, this sort yeah. of thing. So they're an there's energy of, vampire. They just they are energy pull vampires, it out of you. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're out there. So, and they feed off your, you know, if you're happy, you won't be <laughs> after they leave. Yeah, because so, they got to get their happiness yeah, somewhere, so they haul it out of you. So it's all about them and very narcissistic people. And uh, yeah, so that's where that whole concept came from. The... Um, the character, the vampire, the psychic, yeah. or whoever that that you're playing, um, fits fits in a bunch of ways. Just because the the decor or like the mm. costume that you're wearing works both for a psychic and a vampire, but also with the history of where that type of music would have come from, because it's got like that. Mm -hmm. Sort of like an 80s oh, yeah. uh, British kind of yeah. punk vibe to it. And then you hear that same sort of uh, style that's coming out of the music. And there's parts of it where I'm like, I hear, I hear this or I, or I hear this. And there's one part where I was like, that might be like an Eric Clapton riff, which yeah. is different. But he's got so much stuff rooted in, in older blues and everything. Yeah. And then I'm like, I hear a little bit of the, the clash there. And that, that actually sounds, that progression sounds kind of like the Stones. And yeah. so like, I'd like to talk a little bit about the type of music that you've always done, because I mean, everybody knows like Newfoundland has such a re rich, deep, history and musical culture mm. but not a lot of it is alternative in yeah. any way there's a lot more coming now yeah. but w back when the reaction started which is my punk band here um it uh we were sort of the first actually the slime were the first uh wallace hammond and his crew and then we uh fought. i was living in ontario and playing in a top 40 band and i used to go see bands at the the gas works like uh, vile tones and the poles and stuff and like oh it's a big scene and then i heard the slimer starting something here and i moved back after that thing folded and i met rick harbin and terry carter the reaction started which is 
pretty punk. We were doing, we all clashed in sex specials and stuff and originals. Uh, but growing up, I was a huge progressive rock fan, like Genesis and Pink Floyd. So that is always undermining your under the undercurrent of everything I write now. So that yeah. makes sense to me because there's parts of the song and when I'm listening and watching the video and it's got like that um, that grit to it and and a little bit of um, a little bit of what you would hear in punk, but it's somehow rounded at the end mm -hmm. a bit, which I guess comes from sort of the progressive rock, rock sort yeah, of stuff absolutely. And, and how it kind of blends together. So yeah. it's really interesting to hear the artist's side of like your history and then relate that to the evolution so that when people interpret it. Yeah, I try and, uh, well, I love guitar rock like Tragedy of the Hip and uh, I don't think there's enough of that around now so trying to keep that going. Um, but yeah, the prog will creep its, its way in and, and the Diary of Psychic Vampire EP has got sort of one song that's kind of punk, it's called Is It Against the Law to Kill My Neighbors, uh, <laughs> which a lot of people can relate to. Uh, but there is more of a, it's not as hard, hardcore as like early reaction was. Yeah. But um, I find, uh, I, I used to play bass for years, but the last four years I really focused on guitar and I found my singing's gotten better because of that, so. That I makes can, sense I, though, yeah, because I, you're carrying, there's more you've got melody, melody as opposed exactly. to just rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've, you, this album that you just mentioned is out, mm -hmm. and you're nominated for uh, uh, Rock, Rock Artist, Artist of the Year, yeah, for, with the Music NL, Music NL Awards, yeah. which is coming up like now ish, yeah, uh, which is cool. Kind of the the grandfather of local punk music. That's what my wife thinks I should call myself, Godfather. Godfather. Yeah. God, no, you yeah. know what? That's way better. I'm. So, yeah. You are not that old. Yeah. Godfather. <laughs> not and uh, yeah. so the video we just watched is, is filmed at the at Stone the Jug. Stone yes. Jug. And you got a show Segway. coming up. Segway. Good Segway. Jug. Yes. Yeah. So just give us a little bit about um, about this show that's coming up on the 28th. Well, that's a Halloween gig. And um, so come dressed up, and uh, we played there in May of this year, and it was really, really good reception. And uh, so the owner wanted us to come back because you got to play Halloween, man. I said, okay, you know. I've sort of had bad luck with Halloween gigs. I'm a little nervous about it, but he seems to think it'll do fine, you know. And so. well, the vibe yeah. works. Yeah, it's a great place. And that's right. where we shot the video. Yeah, yeah. Too, so, so it's it's like a really. Oh, well, there's really a ghost cool on the third floor. That's for sure. So I went up there and said, can we shoot our video here? And no answer, but you know, it's good to well, be on good terms. <laughs> I mean, having, having taken first aid courses, if, yeah. if I ask you, I'm a first aider, can I help? And you don't mm. respond, I'm supposed to help. Oh, okay. So yeah. maybe the ghost just was like, well, yeah. I only say no. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm sure you had a good time, so. Yeah, anyway. amazing. Um, so uh, we're going to take a, 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 a break before we get on to the rest of our show. But, Mike, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, I Jason. And have a, a great time. season. Oh, thank uh, you. Good yeah, to see you. And good to see you healthy again. Yes. So. I mean, yeah. we didn't even get into it. Mike has been working here at Rogers for ever yeah. and recently decided that um, it's time to retire and mm. just make cool music. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I'm glad you're doing it. Uh, right. I'm looking forward to the show. And, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Uh, let me introduce you to a man whose hair is curlier and his facial hair is better than mine. How's it going? <laughs> I got super curly hair, but I, I, I just cut it all off. So I'm looking at you and I'm like, oh, I remember that. Uh, Mr. John Harris, hi. Hey, how's it going, man? I, I'm doing well. Thanks for coming out. Um, John, you are the executive director for external affairs of the Memorial University of Newfoundland Students' Union. Absolutely. We, uh, we represent 11,000 undergraduate students on the St. John's campus. There's 11,000 people at MUN now? Yep, uh, that's, and that's just undergraduates. So there's uh, several other unions that represent the different Holy ones. Holy so. cow. Yeah. I rem like, now I'm feeling so old, because I was just going to say, like, well, when I went there, there was only, and I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, okay, so there's a bunch of stuff that's been going on in our local economy, our local market, that 
has sort of trickled into university affairs in some ways. And there's other stuff that's sort of exclusive to you guys that I think the world just sort of needs to hear about. Absolutely, kind of. yeah. Um, being, being in real estate, being somebody who helps people buy and sell houses and find accommodations, I do find the, the housing issue uh, really important, but it's my natural inclination to dive right into that. So let's talk about some of the other stuff that's going on first. You mentioned, um, you mentioned some subsidies from the government and changes there. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so we were successful in our lobbying and our protest efforts uh, to get a fee removed for students this semester. Uh, coming from our town hall, from our ad all out like 99 protests last November, we, uh, with our meeting with government, uh, Premier Fury announced that there will be a $10 million, up to $10 million grant to the university to get rid of the campus renewal fee. So the campus renewal fee was a, a fee that came in uh, at about $50 per course. And that was, came in in 2017 after, okay. after uh, budget cuts to the university from the provincial government. So that fee was eliminated for this year and we're hoping that it's gonna continue the next year. So students are looking at saving about $500 uh, this year from the elimination of that fee. And uh, that's thanks for thanks to students coming out and uh, you know, speaking out about the cost of living and the cost of tuition. So what was that fee for? So right now at Memorial, uh, there's about a $450, uh, $450 million deferred maintenance uh, uh, budget line that cannot be filled. So there's about $450 million. So by deferred maintenance budget, you mean $450, $450 million worth of work that needs to be done that they can't afford to do, so it's just put off. Yes, yeah. Okay, so that problem don't get better. No, uh, well, they're still getting the $10 million. It's just that students don't have to pay for it out of pocket. Gotcha. It comes gotcha. from the government. That, that's a huge problem. And, and it includes the Reed Theater and the Arts Administration Building. It includes, you know, the asbestos problems that happen all across the university and the, you know, crumbling infrastructure that's going on in the uh, university. And it's indicative of, of you know, the budget cuts of the $60.4 million that have been cut from the university uh, to be phased in over five years. So uh, students have been hit with the brunt of that, but you know, economically it's a, a, a huge problem for Memorial and their deferred maintenance cost and creating the university that uh, everybody wants to go to. Yeah. So that uh, is, you know, a, a continuous, continuing problem that is going to be made worse by the $68.4 million cut so, from the So the let's talk about that one, the 68.4, that cut. That was, let, talk about timelines. Sure, yeah. So, so that cut was announced in uh, 2020, uh, came in 20, uh, or 2020 or 2021, and it came into effect in 2022. Uh, since, since then, we've seen a, uh, about a 20% drop in, in enrollment. Uh, so, so the twenty percent enrol twenty percent drop in enrollment. How? What mechanism would cause that to be? Would cause that to happen because of a budgetary cut? Well, uh, the point I forgot to mention was the uh, the, the the doubling of tuition. So gotcha. that, that that was the important part. So, okay, I, so, I, after, so there's your twenty percent. Yeah. So after after the this cut was announced, the the university uh, came out and said. You know, for new students, you're going to be paying twice as much. So it's gone from three thousand a year for domestic students to six thousand a year uh, uh, for new domestic students, and it, the, the rate for students from other provinces mm -hmm. has stayed the same. So okay. now domestic students and other province students will be paying six thousand. For international students, their uh, theirs went up to uh, from twelve thousand to twenty thousand a year. So it's, it's really uh, been uh, you know, an incredibly huge jump to make, uh, especially for families that have been planning sure, yeah. for their education for 20 years, there's been a tuition freeze, and uh, almost out of nowhere, the tuition has doubled. So uh, we're looking at you know, a lot bigger debt for young people in this province, and we're looking at a, a lot less affordable way to get so, public so education if this, here. If this is not feasible from from the st student's perspective 
it's it's also I mean clearly the operating budget wasn't feasible from the university's perspective because they lost like 60 something million or whatever it was and if that money is actually needed to run things then it has to come from somewhere and if it can't come from the students then I mean the government don't have it like we're all aware of like sort of what our provincial debt is and what sort of like I get you're you represent the union for the undergraduate students, so you've got you've got an, uh, a drive and a responsibility and uh, a motivation, and you feel empowered to try and communicate how this doesn't befit the people that you represent. But what do you do? Well, we want the government to make the budget decision to include Memorial in that budget and to make it affordable for students. I think it's, it's a, a budget is a value statement. Do you value young people being educated? If so, plan it in your budget. Uh, if you don't value it, then you can cut it all you want, but uh, I, I don't see young people supporting so how, any government that cuts funding to, to the public institution. How, how does the, the, the quality of education that the um, I don't know what, what comes to mind like our engineering school or our business school they both seem to have decent reputations the quality of education that somebody gets from Munn's business school how does that uh, compare against other business degrees across our country like are we aware of these kind of things well our, our Memorial is is one of the uh, you know best universities uh, across the world it's a it's a recognized worldwide it's a it's a fantastic institution and very high quality institution uh, you know it brings in about 450 million dollars per year in uh, federal grants for research it's bringing in a, a, a huge amount of money from uh, from the federal government uh, to the province it's you know we're able to give a high quality education for our young people here it's bringing in growing our population with international students it's it's a fantastic economic driver for the province and it's a you know for for us it's also a uh, a way to grant you know the ability for people of all incomes to go to university to have that opportunity and that's the province that I want to live in that grants that opportunity no matter how much you can need to pay uh, you should be able to go to, to university and unfortunately it's becoming a university only for those who have the ability to pay or those who want to take on tremendous risk of going into debt yeah. in this kind of economy, which is uh, untenable for, for a lot of students. I get it. It, se it seems like there's this really hard line that everybody's up against, the students, yourself, the government, and the university itself, because you will have um, generally, v very roughly and generally speaking, you have a university that is in need of repair and you have a uh, high quality education and relatively speaking across Canada and the world not a super high tuition but much higher than we're used to here and then we want the low tuition but we want the buildings fixed and we want to keep the quality of the education the government says no we don't have money and the students are like well you're making it unaffordable because everything else in the world is like with inflation like it seems like a very complex problem to pick the pieces out of and try and reassemble them in a way that like it has stability absolutely it, it is an incredibly complex problem but when we look at you know the budget say this in the past year where there have been no no changes to the planned cuts we're, we're also looking at you know Finance Minister Siobhan Cody announced that we we're in a multi $300 surplus $300 $300 million surplus from higher than average oil revenues when when there's higher than average oil revenues that's not a time to be cutting back the you know public institution that is the lifeblood of the economy here. Uh, this is what makes you know high skilled so, workers. So give money right? some of that money. I, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that if we're looking to invest and we need to invest in uh, you know all the reports say we're going to need high skilled workers. Where do you get high school workers? We you know we look at the social worker shortage. There's about 99 social workers that we're missing. Nurses, Te nurses, medical teachers. professionals. Yeah. So, so when you, we're having a shortage of high school workers in the same uh, you know uh, year that this is happening, you're making it twice as expensive yeah. to yeah. go to university. What kind of message is that sending to young people that maybe maybe they, their uh, efforts will be appreciated elsewhere? Right? Fair enough, man. We're I gonna guess. we're gonna lose people, and it's a and it's a sad thing to to, to say. Because 
because you know I love this province and I love this university and this university was created to give our young people that opportunity to study and to get an education where before we had never had that opportunity here in this province. Well Mr. Harris, wise beyond your years, <laughs> the, almost wise as your mustache, thank you very much for coming out. Greatly appreciate the conversation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, obviously a big topic. Uh, me and John ain't gonna solve it today. But we are gonna take a break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. I enjoyed this. I like when there's a lot of different stuff that we can talk about and we can put it all together into something that tells stories and informs us and maybe inspires us to think about ways that we could do things a little bit better. One of the ways that we could do things a little bit better, I guess, you know, like Mr. John Harris is talking about, is figuring out where money needs to come from to get a good education in a school that is well maintained. Also, I have another music video for you from Mr. Mike Fisher, thinking of interesting things and community things and memories and how to preserve things. Uh, roadside memories and signs, and I, I, just, I just think you'll enjoy this. Thank you very much for watching. Here's another video from Mr. Mike Fisher. is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Are you low on food? Struggling to pay the bills? 